Here's a question about negative uh, calorie foods. Quick question, does anyone eat dill pickles that contain no calories on OMAD, or would that break a fast? Now, this question is interesting because it deals with the subject of negative calorie foods, which sometimes come up. People ask, can you eat, for instance, all celery? And since celery is a negative calorie food, it technically, in the, over the long haul, takes more calories than it gives, so therefore you would lose weight. Now, anyone with any sense who thinks about this realizes this is a, a no-go completely. First of all, there are no no-calorie foods. They all have some positive calorie uh, cruel. Uh, so that's a myth right there. But let's assume it was true. Let's assume you actually had uh, a negative calorie food that is going to put you in the hole by 100 calories just to eat it. How much of that food do you think you could or would eat would you actually eat nothing but dill pickles for a month or six weeks or three months? Of course, the answer is you would definitely not. The most brazen of us would not attempt to do such a thing. So the idea is a little bit silly, but worse here, what is highlighting this question and making it dangerous is that it is a question that looks for a hack. And anytime you look for a hack, you run into problems. What if there was a way to put nanoprobes in our bodies to eat all of our fat, and that way we could eat all the time and not have any fat? Ha ha, see this is great. Technology, the wave of the future is gonna be great. Uh, it's utterly not, and that's ridiculous. Uh, it's ridiculous for the same reason that gastric bypass is dangerous and ridiculous because people, there's a lot of people that think, oh, I'll just get gastric bypass. Never mind all of the complications and the risks that it carries with it, but it's the fact that most everyone you know who's had it has gained their weight back or not lost as much as was promised because they stretched their stomachs out. And anytime you go in as a, as a candidate for lap band or any sort of weight loss procedure, the problem comes from the fact that they tell you you have to lose weight first because you'll stretch your stomach out. The worst doctor will tell you that. The most clueless, the most lacking doctor will, will know to tell you that, and that's one of the checklists of things they have to go through. You have to show them that you can lose 50 or 100 pounds before the procedure starts. So the idea, and this idea has been around, it, it showed up in MIT Magazine, I believe 2016, and it said nanoparticles can be put in our body to digest fat. But of course, even the article admits that that's a dangerous, that that's not a fix-all. And it's not a fix-all because you won't learn the lesson that you initially should learn to control yourself. So what are you going to do? You're going to eat more and you're going to put away more fat and the, the body's going to have to, you're going to have to have more nanoprobes to keep digesting fat. Not to mention, it's not going to solve all the other problems that come with overconsumption like insulin production. You would have to have a whole new set series of nanobots in there uh, to absorb the excess insulin from all of this stuff that you're eating. You would have to have nanoprobes that, that break down and actually don't pollute you or contaminate or get stuck in your liver or kidneys, which is a separate problem. Can you see, folks, why this sort of thinking is dangerous? You cannot find a hack for these sorts of things. You cannot find a hack that says, well, in the future, we will be able to do this. It's like life extension technology. It will never work. Yes, you can get medication that will extend your life for a time. The same way you can go on gastric bypass at 600 pounds and go and drop 300 pounds or more sometimes. But that's not a guarantee because four years down the road, you're, you still have to learn that lesson and apply those skills. Do you see why you can't beat the system? You can't say a hundred years from now, we'll be able to cure all our diseases because, and it doesn't even work that way. That's why germs and bacteria and uh, viruses are such a problem because they work in sync with your body and have a relationship with your body. You can't purge them all the same way you can go to the, 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 a planet with the brightest star and still have shadows because as soon as you block the light, the shadow is there. This is the problem. This is why OMAD and self-control will never be out of style. It will never be not needed. It will never be a thing of the past because you will never get to a point. Even if you can artificially speed up your metabolism, 
if you can artificially enhance thyroid function or do something else, that's not going to remove personal responsibility. This is the trouble. The fact that you're looking for a hack of any kind, whether it's negative calorie foods or some sort of a, a you know, technological implant, means you have missed the mark and you are on the hedonist quest for destruction. It's always destruction. If you feel like you can, um, you can do something without consequences, then you haven't learned one of the lessons that even Hollywood knows. Speaking of Hollywood, HBO has a series called Westworld, and it's about a fantasy West, old West, that is created by AI. And of course, this is run by rich, greedy, horrible people who want to have a fantasy world, a sick fantasy world for them. So what if they want a brothel, if they want to go have sex with uh, a, uh, a, a whore in a, a tavern, then they have an AI who acts and, you know, physically like a whore and they... It, it catches their bodily fluids, does all this. If they want to kill a bartender or beat somebody up or go out and rob a train, they can do that. And the, the, the fantasy is fixated around all of these characters. And of course, spoiler, if you haven't seen Westworld, the, the premise of the show is that the AI begins to uncover intelligence. So they start to fight back and uncover sanity. And of course, even something like that is an example of what your body will do. You're, there is no free lunch. You will never get a situation where you go and you get a bunch of weight loss pills at work. I tried this uh, in the in the 90s. My wife and I went out and uh, we, we, we found Fat Burner X 2000 Plus or some ridiculous thing like that. And of course, in our minds at the time, this pill was going to be what we needed to lose weight. A few of you really think that way. You really do believe that there's still a secret holy grail out there that's going to un unlock things. And of course, all it was was a caffeine pill. We took a bunch of them because we wanted to start our weight loss success well. And then, of course, what did we do? We got the same heart murmurs with all the caffeine pills. And of course, it was a total disaster. Uh, we actually took them back to the mall and said, hey, lady, you take this. And, you know, she's like, well, you already took some. And I'm like, I don't care. You're going to give us some, our money back or we're going to cause a stink in the, the mall. And we did. She gave us our money back. The point is, the by all too obvious point now, there'll never be a hack. There will never be a hack. A hundred years from now, when our iPads are are floating up in the air and um, there, you know, we have all this technology, it's not going to replace what is essential to human life. I know there's the tendency to deny that and say, well, let's see. It's amazing what we can do, but all of that is pride, and pride comes before a fall. So stop looking for hacks. Go out there and do what you already know is going to work and manage your life. Control yourself. Have a great day.